practical electricity. So let's start. First of all, there are four formulas that you're supposed to memorize for this topic. Okay, so the first one, E equals to PT. E is your energy, which is represented in joules. And then P, power, which is in watt. And then T is in second. Okay. And then the other three formulas, you have P equals to IV, P equals to I square R, and P equals to V square over R. So it is basically depending on what information they give you in the question. So let's say if they give you current and voltage, you can use P equals to IV. If they give you current and resistance, then you can use P equals to I square R. Or lastly, if they give you voltage and resistance, you can use P equals to V square over R to find out the power. Okay. So basically this one, 1, 2, and 3, they are very similar. So it just depends on the question itself. And then just take note, the units must be correct before you can use the formula. Current, the units will be ampere, SI unit, and then SI unit for voltage will be volt, and then SI unit for power will be watt. And then resistance, of course, will be ohm, okay, the omega sign. Okay, so you need these four formulas for the calculation for this topic. Okay, next. All right, electric bill. So you will see question, they will ask you to calculate electric bill for this topic. So first of all, you need to think, no, electrical energy right, is not calculated in joules. It's actually calculated in like kilowatt hour, okay, kilowatt hour. This is a kilo. Watt is capital W, then H is for hour, small h. Okay, so you always start from E equals to PT. So it's very similar to the formula in the previous slide. But one thing you take note is what? The power here is not in watt, it's in kilowatt. And then the time is not in second, but in hour. Okay, so that's why when you thumb them together, you'll get kilowatt hour. You don't leave it in joules. Okay, you leave it in kilowatt hour. So take note, this unit is only uh, applicable for electric bill. Other than that, energy should always leave it in joules. Okay, only for electrical energy, only when you're calculating electric bill. Okay, so I'll give you enough uh, example. Okay, example one, calculate the total cost of a lamp, 240 volt, 60 watt, and a water heater, 240 volt, and 1200 watt. Okay, I'll switch on for 180 minutes per day. Okay, so one day you switch on for 180 minutes, okay, for a week, so seven days. Uh, okay, and then each unit, right, will be charged at what, 0 0.25 dollar. Okay, for every one kilowatt hour. Okay, so first of all, you must use this formula. So I just put it at the side, so easy for reference. So you start with e equals PT. So the power must be in kilowatt. So take note, you have two appliances. Okay, one of them is uh the lamp, which is sixty watt. Okay, but you must leave it in kilowatt. So you must divide by thousand. And then this one as well, one thousand two hundred. You must divide by thousand as well. So the working will be this one: sixty divided by thousand plus uh one thousand two hundred divided by thousand, then times what? Okay, times the time in hours. So you have 180 minutes. 180 minutes, minutes change to hours will be divided by 60. That's for one day. But for a week, you must times 7. So take note, okay? So the question usually will say is a week or a day or a month. So it just times accordingly, okay? So this one, uh, some student might overlook this. So be very careful. And then the units, I re uh, emphasize again, it must be in hour. Okay, some student might just use 180. Don't forget to change to hour, okay? And this one as well. The power, you cannot just put 60 plus 1,200 here. Okay, you must change it into kilowatt. Okay, and just simple calculation, 26.46 kilowatt hour. And then, lastly, the cost. Okay, don't forget, you're trying to find the cost, not the total energy. So, one unit is 0 0.25. So, you have 26.46 units. So, you just times 0 0.25, you'll get $6.62. Okay, 2 dp. Okay, next, electricity. Namely, there are three types, damage insulation, overheating of cables, and damp conditions. So the first one, so uh, when your insulation for the wires are damaged, right, so the live wire and the neutral wire might may come into direct contact, and then causing a short circuit, which will then cause a fire, okay? Second one, overheating of cables. So what do you mean by overheating of cables? So when all the appliances are switched on together at the same time, uh, a large current will flow through and may overheat the wires, hence causing a fire okay and third one then condition and since we all know water is a good conductor of electricity thus the user may get an electric shock okay so these are the three dangers of electricity so trying to elaborate them again okay, should be quite logical okay if not you can just use the points here next slide short circuit okay so it doesn't mention short circuit what do you mean by short circuit okay basically short circuit provides a what a shortcut for the current to bypass the electrical component which will cause an increase in current and then it will lead to a fire. 
So this is a normal circuit. So the positive terminal of the battery, the current will flow out, okay? Then it will flow back in, okay? So this one is the normal circuit, okay? So the red color arrow is the direction of the current flow. But now if there's a short, uh, short circuit, what does it mean? So now you have the extra wire here, okay? So now meaning with the current, right, we'll have a optional, we'll, we'll, have, a, uh, we'll have a second option for the current to flow through. Rather than flowing through the resistor, it can just flow through this uh, wire and back into the battery. So now the current will just flow in this direction, in this manner, in this path. Okay, so if you see carefully, there are actually there is actually no current flowing through the resistor. Okay, so that is called a short circuit, it's like a shortcut for the current to flow. Okay, so if this happens, right, okay, the current will increase and then it will overheat the wires, then it will cause a fire. Okay, so this one is a short circuit. This is a shortcut for the current. Next one, switch. Okay, so you all should know the official symbol for switch is this one. So this is an open switch. So take note, uh, you must remember how to draw an uh, official symbol for a switch because sometimes they might ask you to insert the switch into a circuit. Okay, so you'll be drawing a circuit quite often in electrical questions. So coming back, why is the switch connected to a live wire? So this one I put a star here because this one is a very common question and the answer is uh, there's actually a template answer for this. So it is good that you can memorize it. Okay. So why is the switch connected to the live wire? So first point, you must say that like, it is because the live wire is connected to a high potential. Okay. So means it's connected uh, to a high voltage, 240 volt. Okay. So when the switch is open, uh, Okay, so the, the current is no longer flowing in, okay, because you open the circuit, you open the switch, okay. So now the user will not be connected to a high potential, and then hence the user will not get an electric shock, okay. So pretty straightforward, okay. But whatever is highlighted, those are the key points that your teacher will be looking for. So make sure you mention them in your answer, okay. Next one, fuse, okay. Fuse is another safety feature, okay. So what is the function of fuse and how it protects the user? So this is your official symbol for a fuse. It's, it looks very similar to a resistor. It's just that the wire will just go straight through. So this one is the drawing. So if you see carefully, this is a typical how a fuse looks like. Okay, you just have a, a a bare wire running through. Okay, in a glass cylinder with the metal tips at the both ends. Okay, and then of course you have your fuse rating. You have one ampere, two ampere, three, four, seven, ten, and thirteen. Fuse rating basically is like a cutoff point. Any current that exceeds the fuse rating, the wire inside your fuse will just melt and then open the circuit. Okay, so how coming back? So this one, same thing again, is a very popular question. So make sure you can memorize it if possible. Okay, function of a fuse is a safety device, okay, that will what melt, like what I mentioned just now, when the current flowing in the circuit right, exceeds the fuse rating. So every fuse comes with a fuse rating. So let's say this one is comes with a 1 ampere fuse rating. This one, the fuse rating is 13 ampere. Okay, so it will melt when the current flowing in the circuit exceeds the fuse rating. Okay, thus the circuit will be open. Okay, because there's a gap now when it's uh, melted. Okay, thus this prevents what the electrical appliance from overheating. Okay, so the, the large current uh, is no longer flowing through the appliance, so it, it, it will prevent your appliance from overheating and prevent the user from getting an electric shock. Okay. So a fuse basically is to prevent your appliances from overheating and also to prevent the user from getting electric shock. Okay, because once the current is very high, it exceeds the fuse rating, it will just melt. Okay, so this is a template answer. Make sure you can memorize for your exam. Very, very common question. Okay, and then the symbol. Make sure you know how to draw this. Four thing, the fuse should always be connected along the live wire because uh, the current is coming in from the live wire. Okay, so you, you want to stop the current from flowing in right at the start, okay, at the live wire. And then ideally, it should be placed before the switch, okay, so that the user will not get an electric shock. Okay, the, the, the fuse will just melt and then uh, you'll blow and open the circuit. So even when the user touch the switch, right, it won't get an electric shock. Okay, and then of course, okay, the fuse rating uh, should always be slightly higher than the current flowing in the circuit. So this point is very important because uh, sometimes the question will ask you to calculate the current flowing in the circuit. Let's say you get 5 ampere. So they ask you, suggest a suitable fuse rating. Since we know that the current coming in uh, is 5 ampere, we should choose a, a 6 ampere fuse rating. So it should be slightly higher. Okay? If you choose the fuse rating to be exactly same as the current flowing in, right, it will just blow immediately or it will just melt immediately. Okay? So usually we just round up to the 
uh, next highest uh, whole number. Okay. Next one, earth wire. There go. Uh, another safety feature as well. So earth wire is always connected to the metal casing. Okay, metal casing here. So this is the metal casing of the appliance. So this is the symbol for Irving. Okay, so very similar to what you have learned in uh, static electricity. Okay, so the current will be coming in from the live, passing through the uh, heater or the resistor. Okay, then it will flow out through the neutral wire. Okay, next. So what happened if the live wire accidentally touches the metal casing or how a earth wire works? Okay, so this is a very common question. So let's take a look at the diagram. So now, ideally, the live wire right, should be touching the resistor or the, the appliance. But now, accidentally, the live wire came loose. Okay, it's touching the metal casing itself. Okay, so what will happen? Okay, if there's no earth wire, okay, the current will just flow through the metal casing. Then, if the user actually touch, touches the metal casing, right, the what the current will just flow through the user then into the ground. Okay, then you get an electric shock. Okay, but if there's an earth wire, can you see? Now, the difference is what? There's an earth wire here. So now, there are two options. So when the current flows through the live wire, right? Okay, he has two options. Either he can choose to flow through the user into the ground, or he can choose to flow through the uh, earth wire, then into the ground. Okay, so because as compared, right, the user will have a higher resistance as compared to the earth wire. So the current will prefer the number two option, the earth wire. So it will just flow through the earth wire. Okay, so as a result, as far as the user is concerned, you will not get an electric shock. Okay, so let's come to the actual phrasing. So how does the earth wire protect the user? So this is the diagram from the uh, previous slide. So first point, when the live wire is accidentally touches the metal casing of the appliance, the metal casing become live. So this is how we phrase it, become live means there's actually, actually current flowing in the uh, metal casing itself. Okay, the metal casing becomes live. So as the earth wire has what lower resistance than the user's body, so that's what I mentioned. Okay, the earth wire will have a much lower resistance as compared to a human body. So now the user will touches. Uh, so when the user touches the metal casing, right, the current will what, flow through the earth wire instead of the user's body and then flow into the ground. So as a result, the user will not get an electric shock. Okay, so the current will prefer to flow through the earth wire rather than flowing through the user's body. Okay, so this one is a very common question. That's why I put a star here. So if you can, just try to memorize it. Okay, but more importantly, make sure you have all the uh, highlighted keywords and try to understand what's going on. Okay, next one. Okay, this one is part two optional. So most of the question you don't have to mention this part, but uh, in some rare cases, they give you more marks, right? You need to mention the second part of the answer. Okay, so how does the earth wire protect the user? Just now we mentioned that the current actually flows through the of wire okay so what okay if you are aware of the situation right you realize that the live wire is still touching the metal casing okay but it, it but although the user does not get the electric shock right there's no alarm system we didn't know we will know that there's something faulty about the system so what happened okay this is the second part when the current flow through the earth wire the current will flow through the circuit will increase okay why? Because you remember, just now we mentioned, the earth wire, right, the resistance is very low. So when the resistance decreases, the current will increase, V go I R. Okay? So when R drops, I will increase. So now the current will increase until so high that it will what? It will exceed the fuse rating. Then it will cause the fuse to blow. Then it will create an open circuit. As a result, the user will not get an electric shock. Okay? So this is the full story of how an earth wire protects the user. So in summary, basically what I'm trying to say is what an earth wire work hand in hand with a what with a fuse to protect the user. So when the user realizes that the fuse blow right, then he realizes that oh there's something faulty with the circuit. Then he will go and remedy it. He won't just continue to use it even though he won't get an electric shock because of the earth wire trying to protect him. Okay, but uh, ideally he should uh rectify the fault in the uh, in the in the circuit. Okay. Next one. Okay, so this is another part of a. Uh, common question that the it will come out in the exam for practical electricity. So there are three wires in your three pin plug. So this is the internal uh, of a three pin plug, okay, when you remove the casing. So there are three wires, the live wire, which is brown in color. So easier to remember is what? Live wire is buried in the ground, okay? So it's covered with mud, okay? So that's why it's brown in color. 
and then neutral wire which is blue in color it's like water water is neutral like in chemistry and then of course uh, the earth wire is uh, yellow and green okay so you can memorize it as well the fry uh, the fresh and dry leaves okay and then of course you have your fuse which we seen it in a previous slide and then of course uh, this one this two plastic holder right is the cord grip okay basically it's to secure the three wires and prevent them from exposing okay this actually came out in the old levels as well so make sure you know okay next one so we mentioned before current flow through the live wire and flow out the neutral wire okay so current will only flow through the earth wire when there's a current leakage okay so the current will come in from the line, go out from the neutral. So in normal working condition, there shouldn't be any current in the earth wire unless there's a uh, current leakage. Okay, and then the voltage right for live wire is two four zero volt high potential, and then neutral wire will be zero volt. Earth, uh, earth will always be zero. Okay, so this one you must memorize. This one will be useful for MCQ. Okay, so watch out for this one. And then next, okay, for structured questions, sometimes you might encounter this one. Okay, ring circuit in household. Okay. So electrical appliances in household right are all connected in parallel, okay. So they what they can be co uh, controlled separately, okay. So this appliance, let's say this a uh, uh, aircon and this one is a computer, so they will be connected independently, okay, in parallel. So this is called a ring circuit, okay. So how does it look like? Okay, this is a live ring. Okay, this one is a neutral wire ring. And then this one is the earth ring or earth wire ring. Okay, so let's look at the first appliance. Okay, so this live, this neutral, this earth. So this one is like, it's like a wall plug. You can plug it in. Okay, so inside the wall, right, the live wire, the current will come in. Okay, follow the arrow. Then it will flow in into the appliance to the aircon. Then it will flow out from the neutral. Then continue to the neutral ring. Then it will just flow out. Neutral wire. Okay, what about this one? Okay, so same thing. The current will come in from here. Then you flow through the live ring. Okay, flow through the live wire. Go inside. Okay, your PC or your computer. Then you flow out through the neutral wire. Then you flow here. Follow neutral neutral ring. Then flow out from the neutral wire. Okay, so if you realize, uh, um, this path and this path they are independent of each other. So that's why they they are connected in parallel. Okay, and then of course the earth. Earth right, uh, earth pin right is always connected to the earth ring. So using this earth wire, so uh, most of the diagram is represented in dotted line, or it can be bow line as well. Again, okay, it really depends on the question. And then sometimes, uh, the question asks you to um uh, do the connection. Okay, let's say you draw a, a another wall plug. So how do you connect? So you must connect the live pin to the live ring. Okay, so you connect in this way, and then neutral pin to the neutral circuit. So just connect. Okay, you can put a dot here. It means connected. And of course, the earth pin to the earth ring. Okay. Next one. And next, uh, safety feature. Okay, double insulation. So double double insulation basically means what? It provides two level of insulation. Okay, the electrical cable is insulated to the electrical component, and then the electrical component is insulated from the uh user from the by the external casing. So this is the official symbol. It's basically a two on uh square. One bigger square is one is a smaller square. So this one is a simple diagram. Okay, so the red color uh is the wire, okay, then it's protected with the plastic coating. So this is the first layer of protection. Then this black uh color part is the uh, electrical component, okay, and then it's uh protected by what? A plastic casing. Okay, so let's say you buy a fan, it's made of plastic casing, okay. So this is the second layer of protection because plastic does not conduct electricity. And then finally, this is a user. So if you see carefully, there's two layers of protection from the current in the wire all the way to the user. There's two layers of protection. So that's why it's called a double insulation. Okay. So sometimes you will see this symbol okay, at the back of your appliance. Okay. That's all. Okay. In the next slide, uh, we will go through some questions. So you'll see how you uh, apply uh, what you have memorized the template answer or all the table form into the uh, typical question in the exam okay so don't forget to like share and subscribe that's all bye